So let's start trying to solve quadratic equations, and we'll start by doing this the hardest way possible. And that is to say, what we'll do is we'll try to factor them. Now, factoring is actually based on something that's rather important, known as the zero product property of the real numbers. And that comes down to the following. If I have a product equal to zero, then what I know for certain is that one of the two factors is equal to zero. So that if I have product equals to zero, I know that either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. Now this means that if I can factor a quadratic expression equal to zero, a quadratic equation, I can reduce that equation into two simpler equations. One factor is zero, the other factor is zero. The thing to keep in mind is that factoring is the hardest and least efficient way to solve quadratic equations outside of very, 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 very carefully constructed problems given in a math class specifically devoted to solving quadratic equations by factoring. You will almost never be able to solve quadratic equations this way. So you might wonder why we spend so much time talking about factoring and solving quadratic equations this way. Well, the answer to that question is well, actually, I don't have a good answer to that question. There isn't any really good reason why we'd want to try to solve quadratic equations by factoring, uh, but we do anyway, because we do make these very, 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 very carefully constructed problems. So let's take an example. Uh, say I want to solve the quadratic equation x squared minus 6x equal to 7. And an important thing to notice is that in order for this to work, we have to have product equal to 0. So even if I factor the left-hand side, it's not equal to 0, so I can't use the zero product property. And again, the other thing to keep in mind is most quadratic expressions can't be factored. So in general, it is a waste of time even thinking about factoring unless you know in advance that the question can be answered this way. So factoring does require that we have product equal to zero, so I need to make sure that whatever I have, whenever I do the factorization, I'm going to get zero, so I need to make sure that I have equals zero, not equals seven. So I'll get all the terms over to the left-hand side by subtraction. And so now, a little analysis goes a long way and certainly saves us from wasting a lot of effort. If I should factor the left-hand side, that product will be equal to zero. So now I have a useful form. It's at least insofar as factoring itself is worthwhile. It's worthwhile to consider factoring. So let's think about that. In order to produce a quadratic by multiplying two linear expressions, I'm going to multiply something like ax plus b times cx plus c. And when I expand that out, I get acx squared plus bcx plus adx plus bt. And what that says is that if I want to obtain this expression by multiplying two things like this together, then my product ac has to give me 1 my coefficient of x squared, my product bd has to give me my constant term negative 7. So I need to find two things, ac, that multiply to 1, and two things, bd, that multiply out to negative 7. So I can find two numbers that multiply to 1. How about a equals, uh, well, no sense in being too complicated about this. Let's try a equals 1 and c equals 1. So there's my ax, 1x, cx, 1x. And I need two things, b, d, that multiply out to negative 7. So again, I can try b equals 7, d equals negative 1, and I can find those products. So b equals 7, d equals negative 1, and I'll drop those in. And so I have x plus 7 times x minus 1 equals 0. And because our first random guess at an answer is always the correct one, we can immediately go on to the next step. Well, actually our first random guess might not actually be what we need. So we do need to verify that this expression here does in fact factor as x plus 7 times x minus 1. So how can we do that? Well, if that's true, then the product of these two should give us our x squared minus x minus 7. So I'll multiply those out, and I find I get product x squared plus 6x minus 7 which is not the expression that I wanted. I wanted x squared minus 6x minus 7. I got x squared plus 6x minus 7. So if I take one step beyond this line here, I'm solving a different problem, and I'm going to get the wrong answer. So what do I have to do? Well, let's try again. So again, I want to find two numbers that multiply to 1. So I could try again a equals 1, c equals 1. And I also want two numbers that multiply to 
negative 7. And this time I'll try negative 7 and plus 1. And so I'll get this as a potential factorization. I'll again check to make sure that I have the same expression. So I multiply those out. After all the dust settles, I get x squared minus 6x minus 7. That is what I'm looking for. And so this is the correct factorization. And now I have product equal to 0. And so now I can solve it. So I know that one of the two factors is 0. So either x minus 7 is and that gives me solution x equals 7, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, and that gives me solution x equals negative 1. Now, it's important to recognize that both of these are actually a solution. Both factors will give us a solution, so I should say that my solutions are x equals 7 or x equals negative 1. Uh, point of grammar here, we do want to use this term or. We don't want to say that the solutions are x equals 7 and x equals negative 1 because that's implying that x is both 7 and at the same time it's negative 1. You do want to specify or in our answer. So let's take another problem, solve by factoring 6x squared plus 11x minus 10 equal to 0. So here we have something equal to 0. If I factor this, I'll have product equals 0, and that will allow me to resolve the equation. Uh, so let's see. So again, we'll make the assumption that this factors as something of the form ax plus b times cx plus d, and that says that a c has to give me my 6, my coefficient of x squared, b d has to give me my constant, negative 10, so I need to find two numbers, a and c, that multiply to 6, and two numbers, b and d, that multiply to negative 10. So, well, for example, 1, 6, that multiplies to 6, 1, negative 10, that multiplies to negative 10. Since our first random guess at an answer is always correct, we can use this. No, we should actually multiply this out and make sure that it works. So I'll multiply that out, and I get 6x squared minus 4x minus 10, and that is not what I want. So this factorization is useless. I could try a different. So I could switch those numbers around, minus 1 and 10. Again, I multiply this out, and I find that I get not what I want. I get something else. And so again, this factorization is useless. And so let's see. Well, how about two other things that multiply to negative 10? How about 2 and negative 5? Here is a potential factorization. I multiply them out and I get not what I want. Again, useless. And I'll switch things around and I get not what I want. And I'll try something else. So again, I need two things that multiply out to 6, so maybe I'll try 2 and 3, negative 1 and 10. So here my two numbers multiply to 6, my two numbers multiply to negative 10. I multiply them out and I get not what I want. So again, a useless factorization. And I keep trying, and I keep trying, and I keep trying, and, well, this one's close. This one's close. This is almost what I want. Now, the thing you might notice here is that if I switch where those plus and minuses are, if I keep the coefficients the same, but I switch the plus and minus, that changes the sign of the middle term. So here I'm close, but I want a plus 11x and not a minus 11x. So this is close, and it suggests that if I switch the location of the plus and minus, I am going to get what I need. And finally, after all of this, I get the factorization. And so when you make that decision to solve by factoring, you condemn yourself to going through all of this until you find the factors. There is no alternative. There's no alternative to going through that entire list until you find the factor. But assuming that you have all the time in the world and all the patience that you could possibly need for this, uh, we find the factorization, and there's our factorization. So let's see. Well, I have product equal to 0. So now I can solve this by setting each factor individually equal to 0. 3x minus 2 is 0. So I'll solve that. x equals 2 thirds is one solution. The other equation, 2x plus 5 equals 0. I'll solve that. x equals minus 5 halves. And that gives us our two solutions. And again, solving by factoring means that you have to have all the time and patience required. In order to get this factorization here, we had to go through all of this, and there is no shortcut. So the question you might want to know is, well, do I really have to solve quadratic equations by factoring? Isn't there an easier way than going through this horrible mess? Isn't there an easier way to solve quadratic equations? And the answer to that is, Absolutely! And we'll take a look at an easier method of solving quadratic equations next.